Just completed three years of experience as a data analyst in this February 2025. I started my first internship on 3rd January 2022 with the stipend of 20,000 rupees and secured my first job within a month. My first in-hand salary was 45,000 rupees. Over the past two years, I have been promoted twice and now I am working as a manager. In last three years, I have worked on various business problems. Also, I have dealt with numerous spreadsheets, dashboards and meetings. In this video, I am going to share my daily routine as a data analyst with you. And don't you worry, I am not going to tell you how many times I am having coffee or having a lunch. So this video will be very straightforward where we will be discussing about the daily tasks that I am doing as a data analyst, what kind of tools I am using and what is my market value what is market is demanding as a data analyst from your side additionally i'm starting my new journey as a business analyst and i will show you how i am planning my transition so let's get started my day start with the scrum call where we discuss the task for the day also the managers will take updates from previous day and we address any blockers or issues that needed resolution after the scum call, I will begin to work on my daily task. This primarily involving using Tableau dashboard, Google Sheets, Excel and other tools. As a data analyst, prioritizing tasks is very crucial. But if you are having multiple things and you don't know what to prioritize, then we follow one prioritizing system like P0, P1, P2, P3 and so on. Now before understanding this, let me guess what you are thinking right now. See. If you are a fresher, then you may find this work fascinating. But after 2-3 years, it can become a monotonous task for you. At this point, career stagnation will be a common point in everyone's journey. And right now, I am started feeling that. After gaining some experience as a data analyst, you can choose different career paths such as data scientist, business analyst, data engineer or Power BI developer. And I have chosen to transition into business analysis. Now the question is why business analysis? My decision was based on practical factors. First is high paying job opportunities. I should get high paying job opportunities in future. Number second should be a role that offers a part to senior leadership positions. Okay. Third will be wide availability of jobs across different industries. So these were three important points for me to select the business analysis field. So to transition effectively, I wanted to go with proper training, preparation and guidance. And that's why I decided to go with postgraduate program in business analysis, which meets my all criteria. The post-graduation program in business analysis from Simply Learn is in collaboration with Purdue University which offers a comprehensive curriculum designed to help my upskilling journey and is a course that meets my all criteria. This program will provide me a great value, especially considering the esteemed reputation of Purdue University. And the best part is duration. With a concise six month duration and flexible weekend classes, it fits seamlessly into my schedule. This program covers all the essential skills that is required for business analyst role. And I think this course covers all the necessary things and the necessary skill sets required for a business analysis roles. Once I begin my course, I will share my progress with you so that you will get some idea how to transition your career, whether you want to become a data analyst or a business analyst. Now let's get back to our original topic that is prioritizing tasks as a data analyst. Prioritizing tasks as a data analyst is crucial and for that we are segregating zones. Now what are these zones? Let's discuss. P0, P1, P2, P3. Now P0 will be your critical task. P1 will be your high priority task, P2 will be your medium priority task and P3 will be low priority daily task. Now for example, in my last company, I have worked with marketing team. If a campaign is running, then its analytics was my P0 priority for me. Now let's understand this with an example. Let's say a company selling t-shirts is running ads on Instagram. Suddenly, due to a technical issue, users click on the ad, but they cannot land on their website. Now, as a data analyst, how you will detect this? Definitely with numbers, right? Now, let's consider this scenario from same company. Based on historical data, for every 100 ad clicks, 15 users typically land on their website. And now, after analyzing the data, you are getting to know that only 4 people are landing on your site. That means it indicates the problem. Now, if you can see your yesterday's data, then you can understand that only four users are landing on your site. Now, it's a problem for a company. 
Now, in this case, as a data analyst, what you will do? First, you will inform to the ad team to pause the campaign to avoid unnecessary spending. Number second will be you will notify to the tech team to fix the website issue. So these are two things that you will do as a data analyst after analyzing the numbers. Now because of this analysis, you are stopping to spend unnecessary money on ad campaign and that eventually will help it, your business to grow. And this is how you will handle your P0 priority and P0 priority as a data analyst can come anytime. See, if you are working as a data analyst, or you are working as a web developer or a performance marketing campaigner, then P0 will come anytime. At 12 o'clock, at 10 o'clock, there is no time zone for P0. That's why P0 will be your top priority. Now, let's talk about P1. See, P1 tasks will be roaming around your meetings and some planning. For example, in February, you have sale 9,000 t-shirts, but the projection for this month is 6,530. You investigate what went wrong. Now, this is your job to identify why the sales projection for this month is very low that you have to identify through your data. Now, P2 task may involve fulfilling data requests from other teams. It may from sales, from business team, or from marketing team from anywhere these requests will come to you and you have to like prioritize you have to give timeline to other teams so that they can plan their operations accordingly this will be your p2 now p3 task includes monitoring stakeholder meetings and routine analysis so this is very common thing that you will get in any job and last is p3 some people will have P4 also but will conclude with P3 because in P3 we'll find multiple things like monitoring your data or you are having some meetings with stakeholders or a daily routine analysis that will be there at P3. Now this structure approach will help you to prioritize tasks as well as will help you to manage multiple tasks in a day and this is the day in a life of data analyst. Now let me talk about the tools I use in my previous job as well as in my last three years so i have worked with multiple tools google sheets excel for data analysis power bi for visualization web engage for marketing analytics sql for database queries python or google collab for web scrapping and data automation now my role has shifted slightly i don't build dashboards from scratch anymore Instead, I extract data from Tableau dashboard and focusing on analyzing things, helping business to grow, solving business problems instead of just extracting data or creating dashboard. So this is the typical day as a data analyst look like. And if you have any question related to data analyst or business analyst, please comment below. I'll answer your questions for sure. Okay, so I hope you like this video. Please subscribe to our channel and thank you for 100k subscribers. So, see you in next video. Thank you.